Hello and welcome to another edition of Drinks by Design. We're going to go to uh, the Edison Boat Club. And it's like a private club, so you go down this thing. This was cool. Virgin Territory is the best. And, uh, yeah, we're going to learn about this Edison Boat Club. The entrance is here, and you take this neat bridge. Detroit River to your right, and kind of like a little inlet here to the left. Okay, now we got to find a parking spot. That's the two brothers. Look at the crowd, though. These events, the word is getting out. It's like the second Thursday of every month. And, uh, God, if you Google drink, drinks by design, you'll get it. Here, yeah, this old school, heavy industrial kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. This is like what movies are made of. That kind of stuff. Action movies. They have Homeland Security here. But this is an old Detroit Edison plant. And, but here the Edison Boat Club, and they have members, and it's apparently affordable. I don't presently have a yacht, but if I did, it'd be big. But, no, so, I'm always fascinated. To me, it's a whole new world getting into the boating culture and, checking out the uh, kind of the lifestyle I'm envious to be sure but uh, yeah I'm looking at the heavy artillery here this was part of Detroit Edison this plant is no longer active all right this was Thursday June 14th 530 to 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, I think it said. Okay. Here's a tour guide. We'll take a tour later on, but she's already got a good group here explaining to people the lay of the land. I think she's a Detroit Edison employee or DTE, energy employee. And so she's got the scoop and filling everyone in. It's a happy story. You know, they have things here for the kids. A horseshoe pit. Yeah, I missed that tour. And we're going to step inside the boat club in a little bit, but we're going to check out the, the grounds here. EBC, Edison Boat Club. Boy, even flies above Old Glo Glory there. And the Detroit River was active today. All our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them so that's good words of advice you can do some speed reading here August 3rd 1914 so they're past a hundred years but look at the view here how sweet the GM Global Headquarters at the Renaissance Center. And yet, the Detroit River splits in two to go around Belle Isle. So, yeah, looking at the, the grounds out here, but Belle Isle is right across the way. What am I pointing at? There's even like a little small beach at that northern end. I followed this... Um, and I still do, DetroitYes.com. It's all things Detroit, and it's like a, a blog where people weigh in on topics near and dear to Detroit. And there was a group of Detroit Yesers that would claim that beach was the bomb, but they wanted to keep it a secret. So... I can't do that when I'm doing a show like this, though. But the saving grace is very few people 
would watch. Uh, all right, Design Core Detroit. Maybe I'll show the actual website, but it's a networking event. These guys do it up. I can't talk enough nice things about these guys because a lot of it's about urban planning, making Detroit a great city again. Now, Trump is trying to destroy America, but he did have the slogan, Make America Great Again. It was always great to begin with. But uh, Detroit goes ebb and flow up and down, sine, cosine, you know. And we just went through that bankruptcy thing, so we want to swing back up. So let's make Detroit great again. That's what we'll do. Now, this was new to me. It's like, can you, it's a little paddle boat. I think you can pedal there like a like it's a bike, but I think that's just for show. Just like if you want to act like you're moving. Here we'll look at the menu. Man, they have an awesome menu and I'll show it in detail later, but it's very affordably priced. But the catch is you have to be a member. There, there might be something where, like, if you're a friend of a member, maybe they could invite you over here. But what's so great about this e event, these drinks by design, they have it at a different venue every month. And it's always a cool place that typically wouldn't be open for the, yeah, see here, private area. They have a nice curly Q uh, stairwell there. I love those. But yeah, normally wouldn't have any chance to see any of this. But with this event, it's like, yeehaw. And the beavers are back. Connors Creek is nearby. Then there's a Fox Creek, too. And here, amplify, strengthen. They're on to this. Advance. There's your website, designcore.org. Uh-oh. They're on to me. Well, some people are excited, but at these events, yeah, it's all about urban planning here, the Globe Trading Center. Um, it's an outdoor adventure center. You have to be into the speed reading. But that building was dilapidated not too very long ago, just a few years back. So it's good to see that building was repurposed. And like everything should be on the table as far as urban planning. If it's not maxed out, we have to come up with some ideas and then move forward. And everybody has an opinion. There was one time I heard somebody say uh, uh, on expressions, opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one. I can't say I'm partial to that expression, but when you think about it, yeah, everybody does have an opinion. Most are discounted or tossed aside, but uh, as probably mine is. But, the, you know, the most important opinion certainly is your own. And if you got a good idea, for God's sakes, don't just keep it to yourself. Share it. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, help with the rebirth. Make Detroit great again. Because it was awesome. And, uh, yeah, if it happens in my lifetime, yes, this would be cool. I see remnants or visions, diamonds in the rough all over the place in Detroit. It's... Uh, yeah, it's got the creative type thing, plus the industrial aspect. Not many cities can, can match that. Here, but I'm not calling the action, and I'm going through this fast, but a lot of these uh, talking about adaptive reuse. Gold Cash Gold Pawn Shop uh, in its heyday when Tiger Stadium was there, but 
repurposed. Here, they're, well, they call it adaptive reuse. So they got them from all over the city, but here they're even uh, showing what they did in Brooklyn, New York, the holistic approach. No, this is all fascinating stuff that I like, but it probably bores people to tears, you know. But urban planning, if done right, you got a nice, vibrant city, and uh, it's hip to be cool. Uh, I'm checking out now. We're going to check in, in the bar a little bit later, but look at the art there. And she, I think she was like the matriarch. She was the the wife of the Commodore there. And she was telling me a little bit about the club and so forth. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to get in line for a tour. And 6.30, the next one went off. So I'm three minutes late. So I got to catch up. I haven't found examples yet. But if you do, let me know. Building that remains today. So there's two stacks there. Inside, there's four boilers and two turbines. Um, and uh, okay. at the time that the Seven Sisters were built, it doubled the generating capacity of the Detroit Edison uh, Company. And with all nine turbines, uh, the output was 515 megawatts, which is um, comparable to our Trenton Channel plant. Um, the buildings that remain today, which we're passing, are the coal moving infrastructure, the conveyor system. Uh, the coal would be dumped off of a barge at the, on the river onto the end of the canal here and then carried through and into the plant through the conveyors here. There were 14,000 feet of conveyor belt to move, to move that coal. And I learned something, there's like a telescope, telescoping uh, chute at the end here, which would uh, lower to drop the coal uh, closer to the pile to, to reduce dust. So when the whole building was in operation, um, about 250 employees ran the plant. Um, as it was expanded, um, you know, technology improved, practices changed, it went down to about 100. Um, and then after the demolition, it was converted to gas in 2000 before full decommissioning in, in 2008. But when it was converted to gas, it could be run with, the, you know, a dozen people. Originally, there was a lunchroom and uh, training. Our other plans have bowling alleys and all kinds of company, company activities. So we're gonna, this is where we're going to cross the other side to the island, just to get an idea of all of the buildings on site. Um, you may have noticed we've got a beaver dam here. The beavers returned to Connors Creek in 2008. There's a book in the uh, banquet room called The Beaver's Tale, The Casters of Connors Creek. So you can take a look at that. It's $18 if you want to buy it on uh, off of Wayne State's page. Um, but it's, so, it's an illustrated book with pictures of the place. We also have... about the care that was given to the equipment. DT employees that worked at Counter's Creek took a lot of pride in the plant. It was, uh, all power plants are, are unique. Um, they were, you know, uh, state-of-the-art technology at the time, but it's massive technology. Absolutely incredible infrastructure. And, uh, and the employees, the retirees talk about how when um, contractors or other people would come to uh, re repair and maintain the plant that they just couldn't believe um, how clean it was and the conditions were so great even though the even though the equipment was antiquated. Um, the plant The scope of the, uh, the development partner that you're looking for, the whole over here, or just like in this area? So the other building, you can kind of see where the building was was like chopped off. There's a different type of color brick, um, but the there were nine in total. Seven stacks were part of the Seven Sisters, the, right. the original. Now building. there's two. 
And now there's the two brothers. So okay. of the seven sisters, GTE hosted a picnic, and if you had seven siblings in your family, uh, you could come and take pictures in front of the <laughs> oh, wow. There's actually a DT employee now who talks about it because she says there were seven sisters in her family, and every year her, their mom made them come and take pictures, oh, wow. either on the site or with the stacks in the background. So, um, and now, yeah, the two brothers. There's also there's a New Palace Bakery in Hamtramck makes us. Oh yeah, there's the two brothers, and it's one with nature now. Yeah, look at this, an idyllic scene here. And the detour is going to begin. Check the place out. And this is certainly prime time property um, because <laughs> it's riverfront property. But yeah, they imploded the seven sisters. God, it was a few years back already. I don't know if it's 10 years already. But the two brothers still stand along with all these long conveyors that would um, bring the coal. It was a coal-fired plant. And maybe, well, they always talk about having clean coal. Well, coal really hasn't been, uh, it's the dirtiest of the energy sources. A lot of them are natural gas now and some nuclear. Well, there'll be a lot of sailboats. I don't know what was up. This was a Thursday early evening, and there were a lot of sailboats out there. And then there's kind of... I think it's kind of like a little watering hole here. Oh, look at them. Rum, I'll agree with that. Yeah. Okay, make that great again, too. Uh, a lot of wildflowers also. So that kind of stuff, it fills like the camera lens when you zoom in. Mother Nature has a great knack for great colors. So even things that might ordinarily be considered weeds, they have their, their moment in the sun and in an empty field. You can capture a lot of that. Well, look at all the sailboats. And there was a nice little breeze blowing. There may have also been some kind of a competition, but I don't know. Oh, there's my evil twin. He sometimes comes along for various editions of Motor Capital. But, yeah, coming up on 7 p.m., And it's, this particular building is flooded in the lower level here. Oh yeah, he looks like he's got himself a nice, a nice one there. The water a little calmer. Oh, I'm pointing out the land here. All right, so what's DTE Energy going to do with this? We can think out loud for them or on their behalf. But they, God, I want to call her Michelle, but the tour guide, and forgive me, I'll call her Michelle for s sake of the argument that I can't say for sure when I want to go with some name. But the blonde-haired tour guide there, who I believe is uh, uh, DTE Energy employee, said they had like a request for proposal sent out. Now, I don't know if that's public or if they earmark certain architects, urban planners and whatnot, but the word is out, like what to do with this area. I think the general public could get involved just as well. But I was talking to Michelle, and I said, man, as I was walking around this thing, Make it like a, you could make it a, like a campground. And maybe you only use it in the summer 
uh, for the camping. But maybe in the winter you have hunting lodges and people can do the cross-country skiing or whatnot or ice skating on the lakes. But in the summer you can do a little, little hiking. Uh, we'll see some kayak boats. Um, yeah, look at all this land. It's just Mother Nature all around. Oh, yeah, you can get lost back here. There was a lot of property. So what to do, really? What to do? Well, Hollywood could get involved in here. I'm sure there's some creative types that could come up with some kind of action movie, you know, a thriller suspense where things blow up and, uh, you know, just get this, yeah, high-voltage stuff. You know, just bombs going off everywhere and just... I don't know, like heavy weaponry too and stuff like that. But yeah, use your imagination, come up with something. Yeah, so film some movies. How cool would that be? These conveyors are awesome. But for year-round use and so forth, uh, the camping in Detroit, the idea itself almost seems laughable, but they did a camping in Detroit in the DeQuender Cut, and it seemed to work out well. And, you know, as crazy as it might sound that people would want to actually vacation in Detroit, there are people that run around with RVs and uh, campers and those things you tow all over the place. So people are into that, and... If they could do it up in the, in, uh, in the city, why not? I don't know if it would be a, it probably wouldn't be a huge money maker, but certainly it would be uh, something where the community as a whole um, gets a benefit out of it. This is excellent green space right on the Detroit River. And so I'm just looking at some of the, uh, what was left here but oh yeah you could have a thriller movie oh yeah these hoist I get Arnold uh, or sh um, who else would be a good action diesel right he's a good action dude James Bond maybe you could have Tom Cruise do a Mission Impossible but yeah, there's enough to work with here for sure. Well, art is everywhere, even amongst the uh, the crane there that would swirl around. But yeah, I imagine uh, these were the shoots where coal was brought up. And... Uh, Yeah, you know what the seeing this though, this is still here. The the thing that we had some bad news that just came out on Friday, and that was that the Bob Lowe boat experienced a big fire and it was probably parked in a marina not too far from here. It was on the east side and the boat had moved several times because it was docked and I don't know storage fees or docking fees are quite expensive but it was at the Oakwood Bridge there for a while but it moved over to a marina and Friday they had a big fire and it's like now there there might be a, a, a total loss and that kind of Detroit history God gotta be uh, we got to try to preserve it yeah I'm showing all the green spaces here you could have quite a few campgrounds and pe people could have their bonfires down yonder a few more marinas it's qu there's actually quite a few inlets that uh, have boats and then um, Yeah, you could do a James Bond thriller, too. Any 
number of things. Well, Michigan had those nice tax incentives for a while, and uh, that brought a lot of excitement to Michigan, actually, because there were quite a few movies uh, filmed in the state, but those tax credits were not deemed worthy enough, and they let that go, so that, uh, that income went away. Or that excitement, I should say. Here's looking at the uh, boat club here. And the great crowd that came out. Now, the kayakers, the current I don't think is too bad, actually, on this side of Belle Isle, on the western side of Belle Isle. There's the little inlet, and a little bit past there is the little beach area. I think you got to go to the right a little bit. And there's kind of a little private beach that you're not wink wink supposed to know about but yeah look at all the sailboats out there and then there's a ton of green space so everything's a piece of the puzzle this is a huge ass piece of puzzle right here and so yeah in the winter time if you take the boats up that could be like a skating rink Maybe you could retrofit one of these conveyors and make like a toboggan hill. Wait a second. Are you kidding me? That might be the Boblo boat there. This was though before. Or it's the River Princess? Wow, I should. I'll back it up another time and look at it. But um, the kayakers are out there and so the current must not be too bad. And so in the summer, you could have kayakers, maybe teach people with the, um, the sailboats, the rowboats, or, um, yeah, teach people that like the, uh, the stuff on the water. So, yeah, you get an overview here a little bit, but this is, yeah, the east side. There's some work that can be done on the east side, most definitely. And further up here, I'll see the the Chrysler plant. Yeah, tunnel vision. That's when I get a little artwork there. But yeah, nice boat club. And yeah, I think when it first opened, it was set up for... Um, Detroit Edison employees only. And then, yeah, here we go, the kayakers. a ski jump or something yeah that'd be thrilling back on terra firma but yeah that afforded a nice view to be sure but the event closes at eight now this I don't think was the boat I saw that the Diamond Queen that, that that might have to do though that Diamond Queen that's unfortunate with the Boblo boat. Maybe we should solicit the people in New York that bought the Columbia and just say, hey, we need it back here. It's, this is its home. Maybe if we could get the city involved in on that and we make a push. Well, you could do some relaxing to be sure and that's part of what boating is all about it's to get away from everything kind of relax yeah so the two brothers we still got those guys left which is excellent but long term everybody put their thinking caps on and um, your opinion is as good as the next and so forth but 
once we get that the word out and people start talking we cull the best ideas and then we move forward here like mother nature definitely cutting through uh, the bushes and then uh, there were a couple families one on my left and one on the right and I walked the gauntlet but that was actually challenging because uh, when they're protecting the young it's uh, yeah that comes priority so but I was able to survive this is a great crowd though that they attract at these drinks by design event these are probably architects engineers urban planners from a variety of different things but creative types and they try to center these events because we got some kind of grant or whatever we're only one of we're the only north american city that was designated as one as one of these design cities I think in years past, Montreal may have been one, but as far as the U.S. goes, we're the only U.S. city, so there's putting some resources and uh, thinking in. Here's an overview of the area, and there's the two brothers, and just south of that was where the seven sisters, and then there's this um, housing development, nice homes along uh, the river there. Right there is where the seven sisters. I think that's what we're using for parking right now. Could be wrong. Design Core Detroit. So I came back and they were already closing up. I took the big detour. Yeah, it's after eight. So, but check them out. Uh, they really are serious about this and have the resources to pull these events off. No hats or caps. There's something about it. Even my nice Detroit star hat, I have to uh, put that aside. I was thirsty. But here's a look at the menu, as promised. Now, these are great prices, I think, even though I'm not a big foodie. But these are what, the appetizers? And it's not just one or two things. And then here we go, signature drinks. They have the Edison Breeze. And then the guy next to me, I said, um, I asked if I could look. He had the New York strip and shrimp. And this was uh, a thing that DTE Energy is promoting. So they're trying, and I'll give them credit, they're trying to be good corporate citizens. Oh, back to the menu. Uh, grilled chicken breast, eleven ninety nine. dollars uh, Maybe the members, just because they're a member, they get these great prices. I'm not sure how they pulled that off. Roast beef dinner, twelve ninety nine. That's not bad. Burgers are a fair price, I guess. And you got an Edison Reuben. So they have some touches to the past. Ooh, Tigers won. No, I was told, don't ring that bell. They caught me just in time. It's not like terribly bad you know if you didn't bring your if you didn't bring your wallet though you'd have trouble they say if you ring the bell you have to buy the whole bar around you know a drink or whatever and um that could set you back if there's a good crowd so they stopped i just wanted to see if it worked and yeah, boy i don't know if my credit card could have handled it all right well i looked at inside the brochure and so it's a good place to work excellent and Beacon Park I've been there and they did a good job with that I need to go back that's just open about a year or just shy of a year but uh, yeah we need a lot of good corporate uh, citizens uh, Ford has stepped up to the plate 
to deal with uh, the Corktown. That's going to be exciting what, what all happens there. But DTE Energy has their foot in a lot of things. Also, and maybe we can get into that, uh, that green energy for the future. Progress, yeah. You like to have people that are progressive. And here, well, the corporate citizen, the philanthropy, the nice things they do to make the area a good place to live. So, But ask them about that property there. They had a request for a proposal, but I think everybody can weigh in. Here was a nice magazine uh, for boating. And I know boating is certainly big in Michigan. They, years ago, and I don't know if it's still true, but there was more registered, oh, and you can put your feet up, more registered watercraft in our state than any other state. And that kind of seemed hard to believe considering California and Florida, but it's the smaller inland lakes and the, the pleasure craft that are on those lakes. There's a nice ride. Oh, A-plus for the Edison Boat Club. Yeah. Nice green lawn, nice lighting. I want to check out the bridge a little bit closer look it's a nice boat Life ring if you need it, but yeah, it's a one way bridge unless you're on a bike. Yeah, so I don't know if this is fairly new. They just gave a, another way, but nice homes just to the right there. There's a I don't know if you have to pass a guard shack or what to get in that, that might be a gated community. Well, here again, Mother Nature, so yeah, it's a good thing. We have to be one with Mother Nature. That's a shiny building. Okay, a five passenger, slippery when wet. Yep. So for heaven's sakes, be careful. Yeah, they have the nice concertina barbed wire here, but behind there is probably some well-heeled Detroiters with a fantastic view of the city. If they're looking downtown, if they're looking out their backyard, they're looking at that. But, yeah, but, ah, I, it was just a fun exploring day because there's so many hidden gems in Detroit, and it's kind of crazy. I've lived here all my life, but it's kind of just scratched the surface, really. So there's there's always something new to see. Oh, yeah. A thriller movie? I could come up with some ideas for chase scenes. Can have fast cars, some hot babes. Well, in the Detroit area, you probably have a few trucks. And you could have boats involved, too. You could do it all in just a, a major action scene. And this is the shoot. Someone could fall out of that, and then a car could be driving by a pickup that has a mattress in the back, and it's just timed perfectly. 
So then they get up and without a scratch and they're good. But usually in those scenes, yeah, the good guy has all has cool weaponry, but just the it's like a hundred to one kill ratio or even better than that, because the the good guy never dies. Might get hit, but he'll kill a hundred people, but remain almost unscathed, maybe because they had a bulletproof vest on or something. And then when they run out of ammo, they always steal the bad guy's gun or whatnot, and so they never run out of ammo. There's my focus. And, uh, yeah, but I, we need to focus on Detroit. And uh, it's not just, uh, it's, that's, it's a group effort. Uh, everybody can have their own kind of focus, but as a group, yes. Let's make Detroit great again in our lifetime. That's key. That is key. There's my focus. And if I press that little button, boom, lights come on, lights, camera, action, DET.com. Let's focus on urban design. Can't get enough of this thing. Yeah, I should edit. People, you know, probably say that all the time. You know, but I have a regular job, 40 hours a week, kind of that regular grind most people are familiar with. And so I do my best. Yeah, had a little landslide. Yeah, maybe they could make this a park and summertime and then have a good rock band perform at night. Oh, yeah, Detroit Rock City. But, yeah, we could do a number of things. And it doesn't have to be what maximizes revenue stream or whatnot. It's what maximizes benefit for the community. Uh, but that's me... Psycho babble. Yeah, take everything I say with a grain of salt, too. Definitely. But I'm not worried about having an opinion or speaking my piece. I do it all the time and certainly can understand at any given moment somebody's going to disagree with my point of view. Oh, that's just the chances you have to take. Because trust me, you're not going to please everybody. There will be somebody that disagrees with you no matter what. Yeah, but looking through, there's other green spaces here. Industrial art. East Jefferson. And now heading downtown. in here.
I, in my mind, the person that I came to know. Okay. Now I got a little problem to deal with. This uh, June 30th, I'm actually getting my car fixed. Uh, the side window had a little accident. Uh, at the fireworks not mother nature's fireworks. It was the Detroit fireworks and uh, Had a little incident, but Anyways I better call the action here. I got to get my car fixed. So I dropped it off. It's gonna the glass is gonna be replaced for that uh, driver's side rear window but now I'm doing urban planning here on Van Born Road and I'm in Dearborn Heights now but I'm looking across at the city of Taylor Van Born is the midway point between the two city cities or bisects the cities or whatnot I can't golf here because they had 250 yard sign uh, I go well beyond that it'd be on I-94 Actually, probably I'm lucky if I get 150. Not a golfer, but this is a complete kind of like amusement park here. A close to home thing, and it's been here for a while. Got the go-karts. I'm here early. My appointment at the glass doctor was 10, and they close at 12. So I'm going to go on like a two-hour tour here. I'm going to check out some wildflowers, too, along the way. But yeah, they have putt-putt golf, so there's pirates and the like. But yeah, I'll, I'm going to go on that urban planning kick. That will be a constant theme. I'll try to interwove it with other stuff that might be of somewhat relevance. But I know I'm probably going to lose some viewers strictly because urban planning is not that like sexy kind of thing should go to the beach right Arr. but uh, man this was a hot humid day this was miserable this guy when he gets older is gonna have neck issues I guarantee it it already wiped the smile off his face but there's some small business well actually there's a ton of small businesses uh, along this Van Born corridor. That's a crazy leprechaun. It was a sports pub and grill. Now you can have full detail blacklist. And then that, I'm pretty sure, was the Pizza Hut. And it's a Mexican restaurant now, and Tuesday is the day. It's Taco Tuesday. So that's the address on Van Born. So what is it? The even numbers on the north side. Dearborn Heights, welcome. So, yep. And then this hamburger place has been closed for quite some time. Right there on, it says temporarily closed. Not so true. Here they have a building permit, but it's for a date issued 2011. So... I haven't done anything for seven years. They had hamburgers there. Mm-mm. And who doesn't like hamburgers? And a, a look at, I'll just go through a whole bunch of businesses. Like I say, I got like two hours to kill. So I want to walk around. But the idea is I want to check out um, Masco and the Kmart because Ford took over the Masco headquarters, their world headquarters. But the Kmart's been recently abandoned. And so there's your urban planning question. And this is Mel's Exchange. But this wasn't my idea anyways. I first got wind of what's all happening here by listening to uh, the city council meetings in, in the city of Dearborn Heights, where I live. And they were talking about a or, uh, an experience or a collaboration with the city of Taylor. 
as far as developing this uh, Van Born corridor. This has been sold. I don't know if it's, it will still be a gas station or not. You're as cold as ice. I think that was a, a song. AC is like ice ice baby. Yeah, I think they're using like music lyrics. Isn't that like breaking the law somehow? You need permission. Okay, Tim Hortons. Yeah, but I was saying uh, Dearborn Heights, they talked about this. They got something where they're working and urban planning. They're probably trying to stir up some interest. 21111 was the address for Kmart here, Van Born Road. There's Masco. A nice profile building, but you can only really see it good from this side. The trees kind of block the view. But look at this huge parking lot. Huge parking lot. I'm thinking you could have commercial and uh, or uh, like retail and so forth up front that parking lot does not have to be that big and then you could have a nice park maybe behind that and then some housing behind that to front uh, I-94 expressway or you could have some kind of nature berm or something or whatnot but they could be five or six stories tall or whatnot i'm just throwing some ideas out there here at the end of the road some nice flowers every flower has its day in the sun how convenient there was a porta potty i didn't need to use it but it was there if i needed it there's looking back at van born road and then i says okay i'm going to take the the detour even though i'm in the city of taylor sometimes it works in other cities but it was already 85 degrees and yeah, it was nicely manicured, but here they had like a culvert, and there's I 94. And looking at some of the wildflowers, and coming up on Telegraph Road, one mile. So this is looking westbound. Some cattails. And going the other way is eastbound. So look at, I think they might have had their float. Masco had a float in the Thanksgiving Day Parade. But now uh, Ford is flying their flag uh, next to the state of Michigan and the good old U.S. of A. So Ford is going to try to make Detroit great again. This is good news, but maybe they got something that they can work in collaboration with the Kmart. I uh, hear a drainage kind of gives them a boo. And then the wall, the Great Wall, and I never knew this wall existed. And I'm thinking, how do I, I'm thinking, well, I want to get around this wall. I thought there'd be, in between streets, there might be a little cutout. And I became one with Mother Nature again, you know, just walking through. I wouldn't advocate having camping here or nothing like that. <laughs> you can have a hiking trail, but it's loud with the cars, actually. Yeah, I had to bolt uh, out of there because it was just hard to walk through all that brush. So I ended up taking the uh, the emergency lane here, just kind of walking back. Made it to Pelham. There, if you hit the sign, they cut those holes for that. Okay, but the wall still wraps around. So it's like I want to, yeah, I wouldn't be hopping no wall. It's a wall that would have stopped me, but the trick is to find where the end of the wall is, and then here we go. So, And this is Dearborn Heights neighborhood, but some of the homes, yeah, that one uh, looks abandoned, boarded up there. Uh, and now looking back at Masco, so I'm making the loop around. It's kind of like a a counterclockwise loop that I'm making, but I know I got to be back by 12. 
here, well, they have these graduation parties and so forth, they were, or whatever, end-of-year school parties. And uh, so they were setting one up. That's a good way for the kids to burn off energy. Um, keep, you know what? I'm glad I looked. That's 57 minutes. I got three minutes to go. They say in Detroit, do not let my show go over one hour. Otherwise, the show might no might not go on. I might get reprimanded. This is the Ecorse Creek, and this has wreaked havoc kind of in the Dearborn Heights community uh, for several years. When we have the uh, the great rains, uh, the creek over floods and uh, becomes issues with a lot of people, certainly if they have a basement, but even if they don't. But here, different kind of uh, options if you like bikes. And then across the way, suds and back car wash. Here's a nice ride. Look at the skull. Ooh, sketty. But there's options. There's a Mexican restaurant. So I don't know. Actually, I'm going to have to keep a, a follow-up and see what the city does. Is if they're letting people know what vacant lots are maybe owned by the city and what's available possibly. Um, there's plenty of small businesses, but I don't believe all of them are filled. Like this was Mayfair Auto Shop, and I think they are closed. And I think they have been for some time. And here's a few more that look vacant. So they might, somebody wants a bigger project, they might say, oh, dilly dilly. Uh, but if you want something bigger, they might be able to work with you on certain things. As far as accumulating land. Some action heroes here. The Incredible Bulk Asylum collectibles and then enter at your own risk so don't say i sent you there i don't want to be responsible here um this is a private club too member well see members and guests so that's with the edison boat club god that's the ticket you have to go inside and check that place out so just find a member just say let's go to the restaurant Folks, though, uh, thanks for watching. I'll have to continue this at a later show or whatnot. But I hope you have a great week or a weekend, whatever the case may be. And put your thinking caps on. Get, let's get smart. Make Detroit great again. Good night.